Okay, in past videos I talked about an alternative to lifting heavy weights for gaining muscle size, which is basically lifting light weights to failure. In other words, uh, lifting um, about maybe 30 to 40 percent of one rep maximum. That's more or less equal to almost like a warm-up weight. But the trick is that you do higher reps, 20 to 30 reps, and, and, and each set has to end in complete failure. Recent research shows that if you lift heavy weights, such as a, a weight equal to 70% of one rep max or more, you don't have to go to failure. There's no need to go to failure. You, you, you get all the muscle fibers. But if you're training with light weights, as I said, 30 to 40% of one rep max to failure, I mean, if 30 to 40 percent one rep max, uh, doing 20 to 30 reps, you have to go to failure to get the ma to stimulate the maximum number of muscle fibers. Now, the reason why lifting light weights to failure uh, is, uh, can increase muscle hypertrophy, and as I said in past videos, they've st they they started out uh, with older people. Uh, it was developed because they were trying to figure out a way to allow older people who are too frail and weak to lift any kind of heavy weight. They were trying to figure out a way to, make, to, to help them maintain muscle mass because when you lose muscle mass with age, it's called sarcopenia. It's a major risk factor for mortality. So these researchers are trying to figure out a way for other, older people to maintain muscle mass, and they came up with the idea of lifting lighter weights to failure using higher reps, 20 to 30 reps, and it worked extremely well for the older people. Uh, some of the older people were able to, who couldn't even walk were able to walk again. Some of these people were 90 years old. And they say, then they figured out, well, if it works for older people who have lost a lot of muscle, would it work for younger people? So they designed some studies. They showed that and, you know, subjects as in their 20s, uh, they compared two groups. One group lifted light weights to failure, 20 to 30 reps to failure, using about 30% of one rep max. They were compared to another group training in a tra more traditional manner, lifting weights between 70 and 80% of one rep max, which is fairly heavy. And at the end of a couple of weeks, they found they made the same exact muscle size gains. The big difference, however, is that only the group lifting the heavier weights gained in strength. Now, what I'm going to talk about today is an alternative way of getting similar benefits to lifting lighter weights to failure. And that, you probably, maybe many of you, have, I'm sure have heard of this. There's been other videos about this, which I haven't watched. But, but anyway, because uh, most of these people don't know what the hell they're talking about, so I don't waste my time. But anyway, the point being that uh, I'm going to talk about what they call blood flow restriction training. Blood flow restriction training, or BFR. It was developed around 1966 by a Japanese doctor. And the story was that um, he called it katsu training. But it, the way it happened is he was attending a some sort of festival and he was on his knees for extended time, and it basically occluded the blood flow to his calves. Uh, and what happened is, when he got up on his feet, he noticed that he had this extreme muscle pump in his calves. And like a light bulb went over his head, and he said, wait a minute, uh, maybe maybe restricting the, the, the flow of blood to the muscle, because if it caused such a great muscle pump, maybe it could stimulate muscle growth. And to make a long story short, he developed this system he called Katsu, which involved placing cuffs around the muscle, basically kind of like a semi-tourniquet effect. It cut off the blood flow to the muscle, and it's used on the arms and the legs, uh, in, you know, the per peripheral areas. And uh, t today it's more familiarly known as blood flow restriction. Uh, as I said, traditionally, uh, to stimulate muscle growth, you would lift about 70% of one rep maximum. Uh, but uh, what they found is that lifting, uh, do, doing this blood flow restriction technique uh, can actually uh, increase muscle gains similar to, uh, to lifting heavy weights. Uh, what does it do? Uh, from a mechanistic standpoint, it's, it's, uh, the theory is that blood flow restriction ep uh, uh, exercise creates what they call an ischemic effect. In other words, it cuts off the, the flow of oxygen, the blood, the flow of blood to the muscle, which in turn decreases the level of oxygen to the muscle, which is called a hypoxic environment. And this causes the uh, this causes changes in the muscle, which, uh, which uh, induce what they call metabolic stress and increased mechanical tension. Now, metabolic stress and mechanical tension are two of the factors involved in muscle hypertrophy. The third one is muscle damage. 
and you and you could say that blood flow restriction training induces all three Mecha uh, metabolic stress uh, blood flow restriction I'm sorry metabolic stress mechanical tension and muscle damage uh, and uh, what happens is uh, in the muscle when you're doing the blood flow restriction you get elevated systemic hormone production such as growth hormone and that's caused by increased lactate production lactate is uh, is a kind of uh, a fatigue byproduct of muscle it's actually can you can be used by uh, by the muscle as fuel but it also stimulates the localized Really, uh, or, or the, uh, I'm sorry, it stimulates the release of growth hormone, which travels to that muscle and stimulates anabolic effects in the muscle. Uh, the uh, another effect of uh, blood flow restriction is uh, an, uh, is also what they call cellular swelling or cell hydration, which is the entry of fluid into cells. When cells are hydrated, they send out anti-catabolic and anabolic signals. Just the opposite happens when cells are, hyd are dehydrated. That means the cells are catabolic, and blood flow restriction training stimulates cell swelling. It also stimulates the production, localized production of nitric oxide in the muscle. Nitric oxide is produced in the endothelium with the lining of blood vessels, and when you when you restrict the blood flow through blood flow restriction training, uh, the body reacts. In other words, it senses that the uh, tissues are not getting enough blood. So what happens is it upregulates the localized production of nitric oxide in the uh, blood vessel which has the effect of dilating the blood vessel and, and producing greater blood flow into the muscle uh, and uh, also greater oxygen possible way of uh, augmenting that I, I, I haven't read this but just knowing about nutrition I would say if you take nitric oxide nutritional precursors such as beetroot juice or let's say, uh, uh, what's the other one, uh, citrulline malate, or you can have uh, nitrate-rich nitrate rich vegetables such as spinach, beets, and a couple of uh, leafy greens. Uh, if you take them, let's say, an hour or two before the workout, it would probably augment the, the increased nitric oxide production that results from blood flow re restricted training. Uh, now, the, 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 uh, there's a couple of caveats involved in blood flow restricted training. Obviously, you don't want to Put the cuff on. Well, it, it, the blood flow, it, the katsu training, katsu training, katsu training. That was a kind of Freudian slip. Katsu training started out with cuffs, and they most of the BFR, the more professional versions, involved specialized cuffs that you inflate and you know you put them on your arm, your leg, and they restrict the blood flow. Uh, lately, they've been also using bands, which are a lot less expensive. It produces the same effect. But you have to be careful. You don't want to put it too tight or, or where you cause a uh, too much of a occlusion because that can lead to severe tissue damage. Uh, uh, you can tell how much pressure to use by the length of, of the peripheral, uh, the circumference of the limbs. In other words, people with larger, let's say, legs and arms, they might they will need increased occlusion uh, pressure to get the uh, to, to to get the benefits. A study published in the Journal of Applied Physiology in December 2019 found that uh, BFR paired with low intensity resistance exercise yielded similar muscle gains when compared to high intensity resistance exercise in a group of 55 uh, adult men over a 14 week period. Uh, if BFR is done without the proper equipment and guidance there can be permanent damage to muscle and blood vessels as I said. Uh, one of the pro Some of the problems include improper cuff width, too much restriction pressure on the tourniquet, and improper placement of the cuff. You have to know uh, where exactly where to place the cuff to, to prevent damage to the tissues. Uh, uh, if the cuff is placed improperly, it can cause complications such as soft tissue damage, numbness of nerve injury, and other pain. Some of the guidelines involved in, in using blood flow restriction exercise, you can do it two to three times a week for three weeks, or you can do it one to two times a day for one to three weeks. The amount of resistance you would use is 20, again, 20 to 40 percent of one rep max, which is fairly lightweight. You, the restriction time would be five to ten minutes per exercise, with uh, you know, and then you take it off, and you allow the muscle, you know, the uh, blood to flow through the muscle. You want to keep it on too long again, because that can cause tissue damage, uh, and it's best again used for uh, uh, with the arms and the legs. Uh, uh, you want to you, you think about 
two seconds to lift a weight, about three seconds to lower it. Uh, 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 in the literature, a, a frequently used set and repetition scheme uh, uh, involves uh, 75 repetitions across four sets with 30, repeti 30 repetitions on the first set and 15 repetitions on each subsequent set. So, uh, uh, so to sum up, uh, again, I would say that a blood flow restriction exercise is very good. For example, if you are unable to lift light, uh, heavy weights, let's say you have an injury or you're an older person who hasn't lifted in many years, blood flow restriction will probably stimulate will stimulate the same amount of muscle growth you would get from lifting heavy weights without excessive stress on connective tissue and joints. Uh, what, what BF, in, according to the research, what blood, what blood flow restricted training has been shown to do is increase blood flow, fluid, increase fluid volume within the muscle, which also increases nutrient uptake, strength, and natural growth hormone. It increases the body's production of nitric oxide. It, it increases motor unit activation, that's the nerves leading to the muscle, and, mu and, and by doing so, it increases muscle fiber recruitment. It increases chemical such, uh, substances such as VEGF, which uh, induces the growth of new blood vessels that increases oxygen delivery to the muscle tissue. Uh, it, it also, dec again, decreases the strain placed on joints and supporting tissue, uh, and uh, it also seems to lower myostatin, which prevents muscle growth increases growth hormone, and increases nitric oxide synthesis. Uh, so that's some of the benefits of, uh, of occlusion training. Uh, and usually, like I say, you, uh, you probably want to do each set to failure, just like you would do with the light weights, you know, train each set to failure. Uh, and uh, I myself, uh, I have not tried a blood flow restriction training. Personally, I think that if you do lightweight to failure, this is what I do because I cannot, certain muscles, I because of injuries and arthritis, at my age I can't lift heavy weights anymore. So, for example, my shoulders and my legs, I always train with lighter weights to failure. I do anywhere from 20 to 30 reps. And uh, I found uh, through my experience that although I'm not gaining muscle size, probably because of my age, uh, I, this training with the with the light weights to failure seems to maintain muscle i'm not losing any muscle and you know let's face it after age 60 you're not going to be able to gain a lot of muscle anyway uh, the, very few people can gain a lot of muscle after age 60 so what you the goal after age 60 should be to try and maintain as much muscle and strength as possible uh and uh, I, you could simulate blood flow restriction with using lighter weights by keeping constant tension on the muscle this is in, in research, this is called time under tension, and this is another factor that increases muscle growth. So let's say when I do, let's say um, my shoulder exercise, I'm doing, let's say, a, a weight equal to, let's say, 30 to 40% of one rep max. I'll go for 20 to 30 reps to failure, but here's the deal. I don't pause. Let's say I'm doing light array. I don't stop. I keep tension on the muscle. I, I take about two seconds to raise it, three or four seconds to lower the weight, and I don't pause between reps. I keep constant tension on the muscle throughout the whole set. And what and what and I've read research. Apparently, that simulates blood flow restriction because the you know the contraction of the muscle actually uh, occludes blood flow if you again keep the tension on the muscle. So that's a way of get, of doing blood flow restriction without having to wear cuffs or or uh, or bands tied around the muscle. So again, this is a uh, a possible alternative for those who want to uh, get uh, it'll especially work well if you're 40 or under if you're looking to get increased muscle size but you don't want to for some reason whatever you don't want to lift heavy weights a, a blood flow restriction is a very good alternative and if you combine it with a traditional training it works even better according to studies uh, but I, I should also warn that blood flow both blood flow restriction training and training with lightweight to failure, they won't produce muscle strength. They'll, put, they'll increase muscle mass or muscle hypertrophy, but they're not, they're not great for, uh, they're very ineffective for increasing muscle strength. To increase muscle strength is no other option other than to lift heavier weights. It's the only way to increase muscle strength. And as I said, past the age of 60, 
you're going to be very limited in how much strength you can gain. But you want to, again, the major goal, well, even at past the age of 40, the major goal should be to maintain as much, much muscle mass as possible because a loss of muscle with age, known as sarcopenia, is closely associated or with frailty and with all kinds of diseases and, and a huge increase in mortality. The more muscle you lose with age, the, 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 uh, the, the less time you'll have to live. It'll increase your chances of dying greatly. So I think that's about it for uh, blood flow restriction. Uh, if you want more information on exercise science, nutrition, uh, anti-aging research you can use today, effective fat loss techniques, hormonal therapy, ergogenic aids, supplement science, women's health and fitness, and more many other topics, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I uh, post new information on exercise science, nutrition, and medicine. I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics website where current subscribers only, I don't accept unsolicited questions, can send me short questions about anything they might have read in Applied Metabolics or any, any other thing that comes to mind as long as it's a short question, I'll try to answer it. You're welcome to leave comments under these videos. Hopefully there'll be nice comments. And while I'm at it, I, uh, you can also subscribe to my vi uh, my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I post a new video each week, usually on Tuesdays. Uh, there's a new one every week, so if you subscribe, I think they'll send you a notice when a new video is posted. Uh, but also, please consider subscribing to my Applied Metabolics newsletter. 40 to 50 pages every month, no ads, just evidence-based information, including my nearly 60 years of empirical knowledge, that is, training in the churches, being in the gym, knowing what works and what doesn't work. I, I will share my experiences with you so you don't make the same mistakes that I do, did or the mistakes I still be, I still see being made today in the gym. It's I don't even want to get into that. <laughs> Let me put it this way. The knowledge of training that I observe today is completely regressive compared to the way it was in the 70s and 80s, meaning the people today train with horrendous form. They have absolutely absolutely no knowledge of how to train uh, and this is the worst I've ever seen it and you want to you can avoid this by reading my applied metabolics I'll steer you away from that type of nonsense these people are basically hitting their head against the wall they're not going to make any gains fat guys are going to stay fat skinny guys are going to get skinny you know they're just they're better off staying home and watching Netflix <laughs> seriously and to make it even worse they come to the gym and they take their cell phones I can't help laughing. You know, they do one set and then they play with their phone like Facebook, Instagram, whatever for the next 20 minutes. And then they wonder why they never make any gains. It's really ludicrous. It's, it's hilarious. I mean, I mean, it's almost like these people are brain dead, you know. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, you know, listening to music on your phone or if you want to record your workouts uh, in your phone. But not, not, you know, you don't do a set. In, why are you playing with Facebook and Instagram in the gym? You could do that anywhere. That's idiotic. It's stupid. You know? But uh, Sorry for the rant, but I had to mention that. So subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Thanks for listening.